My favourite place for making me happy is sitting at my craft desk making a junk journal. So whether that's a journal like this that I sit and make, whether it's embellishments that go in it like pockets and tags and envelopes, or whether it's filling it with some writing, some artwork, some journaling spreads, it's the most absorbing thing to do. I sit at my craft desk, I play with paper, I cut things up, I stick things in and the result is just a thing of joy. But it didn't always feel this way. Two or three years ago when I started my junk journaling journey here on YouTube, I felt confused and I felt stuck. I felt confused about some of the terminology that's used and I felt a bit stuck because I was comparing myself to others, to the beautiful pretty and perfect journals and journal spreads that I see created. I also felt the need to go out and buy lots of stuff. So there were certain things that I felt I needed to just have. But two or three years later, I feel I'm over that. I absolutely love sitting at my craft desk, making pockets, making envelopes, making tags, making the journals themselves and that's what I share here on this channel. So today I'd like to share my own passion and my answer to three key questions. What is a junk journal? How can you get started? And what practical tips and advice can I share? This video is for you if you're a beginner junk journaler and you want to start on that journey and get more from your your craft time and money by being more confident and creative. But it's also for you if you're a bit more advanced because I think it's helpful at times to just take a moment to sit back and think about how far you've come in developing your own personal creative style. So what is a junk journal? Well, I have a few on my desk and this is and this is and this one made with a an old atlas is and this one is made with a lovely old book about flowers and this one is so there are many ways in which you can make a junk journal the classic definition of a junk journal is one that's made from lots of different otherwise discardable supplies so paper and card maybe old book pages that you would otherwise be throwing away and it might be a cereal box that you grab and you use that for the cover of a junk journal. Personally I like to mix in scrapbook papers and occasionally images from things called digitals. So digitals are images that you can buy online typically from an Etsy shop and you buy them, download them and cut things up and cut things out and add them to your projects, to your journaling spreads and, and to your, maybe to your journal covers. In fact, I've been collaging book pages and I just used an individual image to augment what's mostly just discardable pieces of paper. I have got some scrapbook papers in here, little pieces, but I've got children's books. This is packing paper, so this is Amazon packing paper. So I like to include a real mix of items in my projects. So maybe this doesn't completely fit with the definition of a junk journal, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I have a few favourite digis and I just thought I'd share a couple of those with you to give you an idea of what you can buy if you want to. And I'm not encouraging you to go out and buy lots and lots. I think the idea is choose a few of the things that you really like and see how they fit with your own style and use them in your own way. So some of these papers I've used a few times and they're just staple stock for me. I don't want to include lots and lots of digitals for me personally and it's all about what you want to do but I find one or two of these lovely images are just great for adding that little bit of extra. I'll leave links to other channels where you can find links to the Etsy shop so if you're interested you can find those. The ones I've shown you today are from Tracy Fox and from Andrea Allen. Andrea Allen is Artie Mays here on YouTube. I like to make 
easy junk journals and I like projects that can be finished because it's very easy to have unfinished projects and that means that typically I make single signature junk journals and you might find multiple signature junk journals and there are definitely some beautiful ones here on YouTube so a single signature junk journal let's just pick an example is here we are this is one I did as a collaboration with Artie Mays and a signature is the collection of papers that you gather together that you fold over and then bind into a cover and some of the junk journals you'll find have got maybe three four five signatures in them I typically put about 12 or 13 sheets of paper in my signatures I like to put music paper in and because it's just a single signature junk journal it means that I've only got one signature to bind in and I do that with again a really easy binding method so as a beginner I use a, a, a really simple method which is a figure of eight and I just use household string so a tip for getting started is to keep your life simple and easy so that you've got more of a chance of finishing a project and I think that makes you feel really really good so would my junk journals qualify as a junk journal well strictly no because I'm mixing all sorts of things in them but I think I've reached the point where I don't think that really matters I'm not sure that I see that many journals that are made just out of junk and I don't want to feel that I have to limit myself but I do feel like these are some form of junk journal and does it really matter what the name is? I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. I would agree that a glue book is something quite different. And that indeed is where I started. So quite a few years ago, I just found myself making what would have been qualifying as a junk journal under that pure definition. And I had a play with magazines and I just stuck things in and I started to have a lot of fun forming some kind of picture on the pages and also just having fun cutting things out and sticking things in and I think that's what glue booking is all about I think glue books are quite different from art journals where the purpose of an art journal is much more about housing your own artwork so I have something which might qualify as an art journal so I have a traveller's notebook sort of sized journal and this is one where I've added pieces of work, projects that are more about art. So I had a go creating some kind of spread once a month and I did some writing and I really just did what I wanted to do. I created quite positive spreads and I really enjoyed collecting all different colours and creating some kind of cohesive journal spread. You can see that was must have been February, I think, with a nice flower and some writing in a lovely dark pen, using paint in the background just to give something different that blends it all together. And I really enjoy creating these art pages. Here we've got a pocket made from an old book page, so something a bit more like a junk journal world. And here we've got a painted image I think I did that with it's either gouache yeah I think that one was was gouache but if this one's got a handmade envelope again made with an old book page here I've got a few little cute digits and a handmade pocket so this is an art journal I think because it was meant to be about my art some doodling but I've brought junk journal pieces into it so I think this gives me a bit of a challenge as to what I call it and I'm not sure that the name of it really matters. An altered book is something quite different and I have been having fun with this one which I created a couple of months ago and it's really just an old book and I've torn some pages out. I've added gesso to the pages and then I have created various spreads in it and that is just a huge amount of fun. It was a bit difficult choosing the book I wanted to, let's be honest, deconstruct and with an altered book you have to get over that 
that challenge that you are doing something a little bit destructive to what's otherwise a beautiful book but an altered book I think is something different because the heart of it the base of it is an old book so you're not making that but what you might do is create some pretty spreads in it you might write in it you might create some artwork and put that in it so it does get a bit confusing is the definition of some of these journals dependent on the supply or the materials or is it dependent on the purpose and when we mix up all of these styles and things that we put in them and the purposes to which we put them I reach a point where I probably have decided that it doesn't really matter let me know what you think so steps for getting started really it's no more than having a little look around maybe here on YouTube have a look at the playlists that I've got here on my channel for either making a junk journal for embellishing a junk journal so that's making the pockets the envelopes the tags or then filling a junk journal so doing the spreads in it and have a think which one of those you feel most like having a go at then have a go don't spend too long on it don't seek perfection and finally the third step I think it's quite helpful if you can summon up the courage to share it with somebody so whether you want to share a picture on Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook or just with your family or a friend I think that leads to allowing a little bit of feedback not that this is about having to improve but just enjoying some of the positive feedback that you'll no doubt get and that will make you feel good and it will make you want to do more today's video has been very much informed by lots of you lots of my subscribers who answered some of the questions I put on my YouTube community page about advice to yourself when you were beginning and some of the really big themes that came out the top tips were to not seek perfection in what you do and not to be too critical so I've used some of those pieces of feedback and tips and advice from so many of you and I've come up with a few little practical tips for helping you to move forward if you're a beginner so J is about just starting don't procrastinate don't sit and think too much maybe gather a few basic supplies and the supplies that I would suggest you have are nothing more than some paper or card and obviously you could use junk card you could use old book pages scissors a ruler and ideally some form of paper trimmer also perhaps some string for binding in a signature and some form of glue U is for use more of what you already have consider not going out and buying lots of stuff particularly as you may not know at this stage exactly what you want and it's far too easy just to overspend and acquire lots of stuff definitely look around your house and see if you can find old packing old cereal boxes so I've made decorations out of old dog food boxes and then I've added various bits of decorative elements on top and they they have gone in junk journals and it's super satisfying when you can upcycle and recycle certain materials so they don't just go out for recycling have a look around you and see what you can use and you would be surprised how many old books or bits of paper you can turn into something different and something beautiful in a junk journal N is for never criticize yourself never compare your style to someone else's in a way that is about making one more favorable than another this journey is all about enjoying the process it's about you doing it your way and your style will evolve if you let it if you allow it have a play and make sure that the time that you have at your craft desk is about playing and it's about enjoying every minute and then feeling good about what you create and K is about keeping momentum going and one of the ways that I like to do this is participating in Facebook groups so personally I am a member of a few so I'll list a few of them in the video description box down below but I really enjoy participating in the Foxy Crafters and Artie Mays and Friends but there's also Friendly Junk Journal People and Junk Journal Tutorials Facebook groups are a great way of getting ideas so you can look at the 
pictures and the videos that others share. You can participate in events and challenges. And of course, you can share the things that you create. And you'll be surprised to how much positive feedback comes from all of the sharing of the pictures. And I think it's a great way of helping you continue to be creative and to build your confidence in experimenting with new styles and new things to create. You may also want to have a look at Pinterest and Instagram. And Pinterest in particular, I find to be, have, it has huge variety of ideas. And obviously people have collated those ideas into useful boards. So you can use Pinterest and other people's boards to give you some inspiration. Another way that I like to keep momentum going is having a browse around charity shops or thrift stores for old books and there are a plethora of ways in which old book pages can be used in our junk journals. I absolutely love trawling through those books and finding different ones. I love turning old maps and atlases into large pouches and pockets. I use the pages in my journals and I like music paper, I like the contrast. I just love the whole mix and feel of it. You may want to have a look at those Etsy shops and just have a browse around some of those digitals and from time to time by spending maybe three, five, six dollars you could get something that you could really use a lot in your projects. I like to have a few staples, just the basics, and then add to it and then I feel like I'm getting something different every time but sometimes you just want a focal point. And to have fun, I hope you will come back and visit my channel and check out all of the other videos I have here. I have three key playlists which, which I'll link in the description box down below, which cover making journals, embellishing them and then filling them. So do have a look at those, save and share the playlists and really enjoy your own personal creative journey making your junk journals. I hope to see you soon.